Hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you for Arcadia Economics. And today, a quick video, a preview of Jerome Powell's Jackson Hole speech, which is scheduled to come your way Thursday morning. Because some of this stuff, <laughs> Steve Kranzler often likes to say, is becoming quite Orwellian. Um, certainly for anyone who has studied predictive programming in recent times, I think has been noticing a lot of unusual things. And some of this is just, I mean, it's beyond stunning. Keep in mind, Fed already doing unlimited quantitative easing. And now Powell is set to deliver a profoundly consequential speech, changing how the Fed views inflation. And let me take a wild stab at it and imagine that it's not going to make inflation lower. Um, talked about this a little bit last night, but I know a lot of people are interested in the Fed tomorrow. So wanted to just go through some of the whoppers that they're assaulting the mainstream public with. Um, I mean, and really on a quick side note, this is why I started Arcadia because you know, once I started studying Austrian economics and was fortunate enough to be able to read through some of these money stealing myths. Um, I mean, it's, this, it's, it's almost shocking when I think that Jesus, people still reading and taking this literally. Um, Jerome Powell will speak Thursday during a virtual version of the Fed's annual Jackson Hole Wyoming conference. Speaking of which, I am uh, doing tomorrow's interview with Dave Kranzler. Maybe we could do a live stream. That would be fun. All right, I'm gonna write down a note. That might be new greatest. <laughs> Could you imagine Kranzler while this is going on for those of you who watch? Um, he is expected to outline what could be the central bank's most active efforts ever to spur inflation back to a healthy level. What the flip does that mean? Spur inflation back to a healthy level. <clears throat> I was out walking my dog Nibbles last night and uh, you know i felt it'd be nice to uh, have a margarita here in denver they're like big on the to-go drinks these days so go to the, there's a mexican restaurant nearby and the margarita which was uh, almost a solid 32 ounce cup of ice was 15 dollars and i mean this wasn't you know a luxury high-end restaurant and i was <laughs> After I got it, I was wondering if I could submit the receipt to the Fed's discount window. Um, <laughs> so anyone who's living, uh, I mean, has gone to the supermarket. But the way they phrase this, to spur inflation back to a healthy level. What is a healthy level? I mean, I mean, it's just the whole concept. It's such a whopper where this idea that, and they even, it's funny, they even mention it down here. <laughs> Well, the average consumer might find it absurd to want to raise the cost of living, central bankers and economists see too little inflation also as a problem. Well, isn't that just swell um, that they've been seeing that as a problem? Again, here's Ben Bernanke back in his legendary op-ed, November 4th of 2010, talking about why he was going to do quantitative easing and uh, he talks about his, where's his virtuous circle that, oh yeah, up here. <laughs> uh, yes, and higher stock prices will boost consumer wealth and help increase confidence, which can also spur spending. Increased spending will lead to higher incomes and profits that in a virtuous circle will further support economic expansion. Um, if that's the case, how come the Fed never brought down their balance sheet over the past decade, even before Corona? Why was it necessary for the Fed to do the swap lines back last September? And now we see Tesla stock go from $225. Do you know Tesla stock was $225 last September of 2019? Here we are less than a year later. It's, I mean, it's over $2,000, currently more than an ounce of gold. Um, and if the economy was so strong, how come no time in there? In fact, we saw in 2018, Fed tries to take away some of, you know, they raised rates to two and a half percent. The markets were melting down <clears throat> and they say we're gonna spur inflation back to a healthy level. Uh, I'd also point out that, 
you can still have massive inflation in an asset even while the price is going down. So let's say that if the Fed hadn't just started printing and stealing infinite amounts of money when Corona hit and the stock market had gone from 29,000 maybe to 5,000, if you actually took all of that money away, you know, if the stock market goes down from 29,000 to 25,000, you know, the Fed would call that deflation. But if without their printed money, it would have been much lower than there's massive inflation. I heard a great interview with a fund manager the other day. He was talking about the inflation. It's, like it's in the financial markets. It's in the real estate market. But, you know, if you lie about the, how fast prices are increasing, which is what happens with the CPI formula. And again, <laughs> don't take my opinion for it. You know, I don't trust the silver guy over here buys these wacky conspiracy theory assets that jump through the $20 level and go up 10 bucks in about a month after staying below 20 for $4, just cause there's, I don't know, maybe some leverage, but, um, you know, you, you can take, uh, in fact, let's pull it up. Let's see. Obama CPI adjustment deficit reduction. This one was special. Um, here you see back in April of 2013, no, this is not the onion, but uh, one of the only plans ever for deficit reduction, President Obama's deficit reduction package included adjusting the CPI formula. Where does he, uh, yeah, deficit, let's see. Where is the, basically he talked about chain CBI. The budget proposes to use a different measure of inflation, the chain CPI to adjust benefits in certain programs. Translation, you have Medicare and Medicaid and a bunch of different retiree benefits. That's why it's called fixed income because there's a lot of people who work their entire life, saved money and were sold the promise of the treasury being a safe haven investment and that you know, you can invest your money and then you know what your coupon is. It's a fixed rate of interest. You're going to get paid. And here's Obama suggesting as deficit reduction, which means they're going to lower the number, make the inflation number look lower. So they pay out less. So there is your former U.S. president confirming that the number is completely fraudulent. <clears throat> so you can keep saying, you know, John Williams has had inflation around eight or 10% for the past decade. You know, you can lie about the numbers, say it's 1% or it's not high enough and that you have to spur it back to a healthy level, which apparently appears to be the Pinocchio routine that Jeremy's going with. Um, average inflation targeting means the Fed will allow inflation to run higher than normal for a period of time. <laughs> Just kind of like that quantitative easing was temporary, temporarily permanent for a normal period of time that will last until eternity or until the dollar, you know, until people are throwing the dollars out and stealing the wheelbarrow. Um, someone was mentioning the death of money, that Adam Ferguson book. I read that years ago. I would maintain my belief. Uh, I, geez, you'd have to think the dollar is passed. Just dollar to gold versus rice marks to gold. <laughs> I mean, if it wasn't already past that, it looks like uh, Jeremy's getting ready to confirm it tomorrow. The effort will be the reverse of former Fed Chairman Paul Volcker's rate hikes instituted to quash inflation in the 1980s. Well, isn't that the truth? <clears throat> By the way, for anyone who wonders... Uh, about whether the central banks are independent. Read Paul Volcker's last book where he tells how one of Reagan's guys came in and basically told him not to raise interest rates before the election. Also have the election coming. So you don't have to wait till the election to find out they're gonna print a lot of money though. And let's go through a few last highlights here. Um, aimed at pushing inflation higher. You know, uh, I mean, it's like you just know that's what they're gonna do and here, I mean, consumers are like, you know, it's like, hey, uh, could you slow down? But they just, and economists see it differently. Um, 
and the speech is entitled Monetary Policy Framework Review. Well, there's a real headline grabber. Uh, and we'll outline what could be the central bank's most active effort ever to spur inflation. Expectations are pretty high to get something meaningful on Thursday. Will be interesting if somehow he disappoints but doesn't promise enough immediate printed money. Sometimes you see the market sell off. Um, so that's one possibility to watch out for. Um, here's another possibility to watch out for is that you see the uh, metals get clobbered by a big <laughs> pile of volume. Um, because again, on a lot of these announcements, you saw it a couple weeks ago. So you could have the Fed launch the biggest easing package ever and still see the metals trade lower. Um, you know, they could spike. Because I actually wanted to buy some weekly call options, although it was a little late. You already had that spike today. Um, I may still do this, um, kind of with the assumption that, I mean, it's somewhat of a coin flip. Again, that's why for the most part, I attempt to just stick to the long-term view because, you know, I don't, I don't know. Will they, I mean, clobber the metals tomorrow? It's possible. Um, but is that going to matter in two years or five years? What happens? I don't think so, especially with the September deliveries uh, in silver coming in a few days. So far, it still looks like we're, at least for the equivalent time period of the previous cycle, that the number is higher still a couple of days out but looks like it could be another record um <clears throat> and heading into jackson hole the wall street is confident that chairman powell will use his speech thursday to tee up a profoundly consequential and risk-friendly move to soften inflation averaging so inflation averaging seems to be the new term um uh, powell's speech could include a vow as well to keep policy as accommodative as possible until inflation and employment are stabilized. I think that part was clear already. I don't, you know, I mean, make the vow if you really want, but I don't know. I, I was clear on it. I think everybody watching, if you're still watching this video, my guess is you were clear on it too. Um, although amazingly, a lot of the world is not clear on it, but a great reason to hit the subscription button and the notification bell, I might add, um, because while they, to fulfill these pledges, the Fed will need to commit to keeping rates anchored near zero until the goals are met. It's kind of like the war on terror where it's a very like vaguely defined victory point. And here, let's, let's take this one again. The Fed will need to commit to keeping rates anchored near zero until the goals are met, which translation, and you can write this down, save it, email me in a couple of years, which means that's never going to happen. Just like in 2018, when Jerome Powell said the new plan was to take the balance sheet to the new normal of two and a half to three trillion, but he said in three to four years, which means that it's never going to happen. But amazingly, central bank credibility is crucial. <clears throat> Currently, they don't have any credibility that they can or are willing to allow inflation to be higher than 2%. Um, I think there's a few other reasons why they do not, in my mind, have any credibility. Um, actions speak louder than words. Um, why the need for more? That's a great question. You know, at what point? Now, I think in any business, you have some sort of benchmark where it's like, all right, we'll try this. It's never worked before in history, except for the people stealing the money. Um, but I mean, if you really was a legitimate enterprise trying to do a legitimate function, you know, and had any sort of uh, calibration, wouldn't there be, all right, well, we trying it for 12 years now. Uh, Bernanke's thing never quite worked out like he promised. I mean, <laughs> the fire's getting bigger. <laughs> Should we just spray more gasoline on? Okay, let's let's do some more. Oh, there go the flames. Uh, maybe maybe we should do more. Uh, it appears to be the strategy here. And uh, let's see. Let's get a plug in for the effective vaccine. I'm actually a little encouraged because uh, I do believe there's a lot of predictive programming 
gee, you'd have to think that's, uh, you know, all the subliminals and commercials and during sports. And the fact that now a lot of, uh, I listen to sports radio and I hear a lot of folks, uh, some uh, football analysts yesterday talking about how there's been false positives with the tests. Um, I've heard numerous doctors say that any of the, that they're calling this a, an actual test for COVID is beyond scientific fallacy. Um, so I guess at least that there's being, you know, some public scrutiny to these results, which I think a lot of people are basing actions on. It's kind of like trusting the Fed, um, but in the medical version, what 0% interest rates means for your budget. Um, you know, it's all printed free money and it may be historic for the Fed to announce a different way to approach monetary policy. Uh, <laughs> anything that would be aimed at goosing the financial markets probably doesn't have much upside to the real economy and could create stability problems down the road. Well, there you go. We're getting some truth on CNBC today. That's, it's as simple as it sounds. If the economy's clobbered and these guys just print up a fresh batch of not hundreds, but billion or we're, soon we're not, might not be far from the trillion dollar bills. Um, I mean, I, I guess there actually was that proposal for the trillion dollar platinum coin. And maybe the only thing I could properly end with is that we are moving forward with our silver Ben Bernanke throwing $100 bills out of a, out of a helicopter um, figurines. In fact, a question for the audience. So far, found one place that can make them about like $2,000 in startup cost, which is fine. But they say it'd be about $600 per figurine, which I think would be like one or two or three ounces. So <clears throat> we're trying to find the best way to make sure that you can have a chopper Ben in silver paperweight throwing cash all over your desk, your backyard. You can get one for your hot tub. Um, we want to make a series too. So if anyone knows any artists or uh, silver craftsmen, send uh, an email to Arcadia at Miles Franklin um, and let us know uh, if you know any leads there, because I understand you need, I don't use the need word lightly, but I, I mean, I think we all need our silver chopper, Ben, um, at least so we can watch uh, tomorrow's Fed announcements. Um, and that's why I buy silver, because basically every time these guys talk or do something, while it's not always reflected on a day-to-day -day basis, um, basically, they're going to make sure that your silver purchasing power is skyrocketing through the roof. So thank you, as always, for being here. That is the preview of tomorrow's Fed uh, announcement. I'll see if I can get Kranzler to do a live Q&A for this one. And uh, with that said, I appreciate you being here, as always, and I will talk to you soon.